All right, we got us a new project here to work on, and this is a collaboration project with NYC CNC. A lot of you guys probably know who that is on YouTube. If you don't, go check it out. John Saunders of John, uh, Saunders Machine Works. So they have been building this uh, Johnny Five robot for, uh, I don't know, it's been a, over a year now, I believe, and uh, making a lot of progress on it. But they reached out to a bunch of the other uh, YouTube machinists and creators and, and people like that and asked if anybody wanted to join in on that project and help build some of the parts for the robot. So John asked me if I'd be interested in, so uh, they sent me this print right here and uh, asked if I wanted to build this. So this is a lower torso, uh, I'm sorry, lower torso ram end block. So it looks like the end of a hydraulic cylinder to me, but I really don't know uh, what it's gonna be used for. I guess uh, they will reveal that once they get the part and they start installing all these different pieces. So two inch square, uh, just uh, around one and an eight thick on the, on the height right there. And we've got some lathe work to do with our different bores, some chamfers, and then we've got, uh, you know, put our hole pattern in there. So we've got a little bit of lathe mill work. Uh, pretty, pretty simple. All dimensions are plus or minus 5,000. So it should be pretty, pretty easy to hit on that. So I've got some aluminum square stock in the rack. We'll go pull it, get a piece cut off and get started on it. All right, this piece right here, this should be it. There's our two inch aluminum square bar. Yep, that'll work right there. Before we go to the lathe, I'm going to go ahead and fly cut one side of it there. Well, probably both sides, but what I wanted to show you, this is the side that we just cut right here. And if we use a, a combination square, you can see just how out of square it is. But the original cut, this was probably one that I had cut when we were in the old shot with Dad on our, uh, our other Dewall. It cuts nice and square. It always did cut nice and square, and you can see right there just how square it is. So. We're going we're gonna to use this side right there, and we'll put it down on our parallels, and we'll go ahead and fly cut this side right there to, to get it square with these sides. And then we'll probably just flip her over and, and do the other side because we want, a good, we want a good straight reference face there so that when we go to our four jaw chuck, we got something that we can indicate, and we know we're going to be fairly square with the other four sides right there. I've got this fly cutter right here with a radius nose tool that I used before. We'll just try that and uh, see how it, what kind of finish we get. Come down and just touch it and pick up. Slight amount of drag on the back stroke. We'll just finish that out. It looks like it's doing good. Yeah, it looks good. All right, we'll, uh, I'll go ahead and deburr it and we'll flip it over and do the other side. All right, let's try it again. We'll go up 10 on this side. The other side was 20. Let's do 10 and see if it cleans up the the uh, bandsaw marks here. Okay. All right, we're ready for the lathe. So on second thought, I, I'm gonna go ahead and put a uh, small center drill hole right in the very middle of that that we'll be using to line up the center and the four jaw chuck. I did have plans to actually uh, blue it and then uh, scribe a, a center. 
and uh, use a punch mark and do it that way. But if I machine a little tiny center in there, it'll be a little bit more accurate that way. So just use the edge finder, find the middle, and we'll go ahead and center drill it right there. That's all we need. Now I don't want to drill it because I just want to put my spring spring loaded center in there and uh, indicate it between centers. All right, we've already preset our four jaw chuck for two inches. I'm going to try to square it up by the grooves cut in the in the jaws there to get it close. Looks like that's going to be real close right there. We're just going to snug the chuck up a little bit. First thing I'll do is go ahead and indicate the face of it. Get the face of it running true. I'm going to use my uh, steroid attachment right here to get in here on a right angle to it. So we're about nine thousandths high, right about there. Just chasing my high spot. Just that little bit of clamping has really got it, got it in there. This little hammer isn't doing a whole lot, but I don't want to smash it too hard all right we got that face within one thousandths so we'll go ahead and we'll put us a uh, spring loaded center in here and indicate it between centers this is a spring loaded center that belonged to my dad and we mainly just use this for indicating something in the center of the chuck right there so it's spring loaded on this end so you'll just stick this in there into your uh, center point or divot whatever you got on your part and then just run your tailstock in all right just like that and just give it a little bit of compression that's all it needs and then you can rotate it like this and indicate this part of the center so we'll go ahead and get our we'll get our indicator on there and then we can indicate it just like you normally do all right let's get this thing centered up All right, that's in the center. So what I'll do, I'm gonna come back in there and check the face again with, uh, with our attachment here. And I'll make sure that this is bumped to run true. And then I'll double check this again. And I'll make sure everything is dead nuts, running perfectly true and concentric. All right, our smallest bore is 1.190. So we'll use an inch and an eight drill bit to put our main hole through there. I'm just gonna go ahead and spot it with this half inch spotting drill. put our jobber in there all right and I gotta go find a uh, we'll use a taper shank drill put our other hole in I got a one and three thirty seconds drill bit here instead of the inch and an eighth I grabbed it and it had a good grind on it so we're just gonna use it
that's our tool that we'll be using for our boring. We'll get our center hole cut to the size first, which is uh, 1.190. Had about a hundred thousandths to uh, come out of that that center hole there. So before we do our counter bore, let's go ahead and, and put us a nice face on there. I'll reverse the feed there. that's our zero point that we'll start with so we'll touch off we don't have to touch off we know our zero I'm going to go back to zero and we're going to set our depth and so we want that to be 0 0.380 our depth there okay so let's see 51 150 2 250 Three, three fifty. That's a three eighty. Yep. Sixty, seventy, seventy-five. That'll give us five thousandths to clean up that face on the inside. We'll go ahead and reset our zero here. So we got about six hundred thousandths to come out of this now. There's a hundred. Just taking a hundred at a time. So we've got a hundred thousands to come out of there. It'd be a 1.790 is our diameter. We'll take half of that now. Split our dimensions. We'll use our telescope gauge and our one to two mic. We want 790, so I'm at 742, so we got just under 50,000 to come out of there. That cutting oil on these finished passes, it helps to keep those chips from rubbing that surface and making those little gall spots on it when you're trying to when you're trying to get a good finish in there. And that's why I do that on the uh, finish passes there. It just, it's nice and smooth. And before that, I could feel little, little raised areas where the chips would get stuck and kind of rub. Now we're gonna go in our five thousandths. Back face that inner shoulder.
Just like that. So we'll see if I hit 790. Looks like it's dead on it. 790. So we'll have to do some uh, chamfers there and then the, this side will be finished. Three quarter inch bar with a uh, quarter inch tool bit that I grind just for uh, chamfers like this. Make sure that bar is going to clear that back side. Looks like it. Yep. Chamfer to taste. How about that? That looks good. We got this side done. And just so you know, I haven't machined the outside. We've got we've got material there to machine. And I, I left it like that so that after we got through with our lathe work, we can mill that off and have a nice looking uh, outer perimeter to the part there and get rid of the chuck marks in there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and check my thickness here. So 1.12 is what we're going to finish it at. So I've got plenty of material there to uh, face off. Looks like it's pretty square too, measuring. Visually, it looks like it's pretty square. And we'll go back to our indicator. So now we got our other 670 attachment in there to do our ID. So I'm trying not to over torque anything here. Looking pretty good right about there. We'll do the same thing. I'm going to go back and uh, check my face again, make sure that I didn't move it, but we'll bump it around until it's running, running true. All right, we got 88 thousandths to come off of our thickness there. So we've already touched off. We're going to go ahead and face that out. go 120 all right this last counter bore here I've already got my depth set there we got to take about 200 thousandths out of it it's quarter inch depth to 
So looks like we've got 90 thousandths. All right, so 341 is where we're at. Yep, 341. So that'd be what, 49 thousandths? We're gonna go plus five on our depth, clean that base up. These edges filed while it's in the chuck. It's a little easier to do it that way. All right, lathe work is done. We'll go wash it off and then we'll go to the mill, put our holes in there. Let's go ahead and clean up the outside of it. So we're just going to drop it in here and just take five thousandths off each, each side and we'll see if five thousandths cleans it up. It's not a critical dimension, but uh, we want to take as little as possible there. Just going to use this uh, fly cutter with a high speed tool that we used earlier. Alright, looks like we're going to get it that time. Now we'll have to bring the table up an equal amount to what we just took, which that was uh, eight thousandths. Let's see. Yeah, see. Do a little deburring on that. We'll put it back in there and uh, drill our four holes. What our part is looking like, I went ahead and filed all the corners, get all the burrs and the sharp edges off of it. It's looking pretty good. So we'll go in here. We got four holes to put in it and uh, it'll be done. All right, I think we're there. I 
I had to email Ed over there at uh, Saunders and and get some measurements that I'd, I didn't realize was was not on here, but our bolt circle dimension was not given. And uh, so he he emailed me back, and we got a 2.022 inch bolt circle diameter, or the uh, x y coordinates between center to center is uh, 1.430. So I went ahead and just uh, sketched that onto the print right here. All right, we'll go ahead and get our bolt circle set up in here. Pit circle diameter, that's the one we want. Enter, okay. Zero, our diameter is going to be 2.022 inches. We are on inches here. Enter, number of holes, four, angle. <clears throat> so we're going to start at uh, 45 degrees. Go. There we go. Our hole diameter is 0.28. So I'm going to go with a, it's a 19, I'm sorry, a 9 30 seconds uh, drill bit. And that'll make it around 280, 281, 282, somewhere around there. This is a good uh, reduced length split point. So it should center up real nice right there. Once I break through that, <clears throat> excuse me, once I break through that back side, I'm going to use the power feed. It's going to be trying to cut into that, <clears throat> to that side wall, that bore. Just gonna chamfer all four of them. Got my lock or my stop up here on the uh, quill. Just run it down against the hard stop and just feed it up. My hand just like that. And we'll make them all the same. So what we should be able to do is take this sucker out. Flip it over. Come right back into our stop. Make sure I got the chips out of there. for this side too. Yep. And I got a little tool I'll use to deburr the that inner bore. There we 
go. I got a little tool, a little deburr tool. We'll get in there and uh, scrape those burrs out of that bore there. This is the uh, keyway scraper right here, and this would work, but I'm not going to be able to get all the way, all the way to the very back. I'll just get what I can with this one here. to go in there with this one and uh, scrape it just like that well our block is is finished but I want to go ahead and just give it a, a, a light polish kind of get that residue off of it from cleaning it Make it look good. <clears throat> he did say that this is a like a decorative piece, so that's another reason why the tolerances weren't uh, real crazy. It's just uh, just going to be like a, a cap. This polish right here will make it look look good. So I shared a little teaser over on Instagram and uh, one of my viewers or my followers reminded me there was something that I haven't done yet and I appreciate them saying that I didn't put my stamp on there. So we've got my we got our Buckeye touch mark right here and we're going to go ahead and stamp it. But one of the ways that I actually like to do this now I find that works a little bit better for me personally is to use the Dake press because a lot of times whenever I punch this thing it'll actually kind of bounce and mess up the punch mark a little bit. Uh, maybe it's because I'm not quite used to, to uh, hitting these and the amount of pressure or force that you should hit it at, but the press works really good for me. So let's go to the dake and uh, put my A-bomb mark on there. All right, I've got this uh, vice jaw down here that I've lapped so it's nice and smooth. There shouldn't be any burrs or anything on it. And we'll go ahead and uh, get this thing stamped. So this should be the downside of it. So I've got it orientated so that you should be looking at the logo the correct way. I'm just going to measure each side right here just to get it centered up. It's pretty good. It's about five eighths. Square it up. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just making sure that it's square. Yep, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to run the ram down by hand until it touches. And give it a little pressure with the, the arm here. Not too much. I don't want to squeeze the part. So I gave it just enough that it should make the indention. There it is, right there. Looks pretty good. All right, one final look at it. There we go with our A-Bomb 79 Hallmark. 
We're ready to package this thing up and send it on up to John. All right, guys, we got our lower torso ram and block finished up. And I was uh, real happy to be able to be a part of this, this project here for uh, Saunders Machine Work. So I want to thank John and Ed both for reaching out to me and asking me if I'd like to be a part of this project. And simple little part that I could easily make for them to uh, go to the Johnny Five. And I think what they got going on up there, they got a great program. You know, they got their training and, you know, Saunders, he's been building up a nice business there, a very successful business. And they got this other project where they're building the Johnny Five, which is really cool, you know, and they've, uh, they've invited a, a lot of the other machinists and, um, you know, content creators if they wanted to be a part of it. So there's a lot of people that's been uh, building parts for the Johnny Five robot. So you can see all that over on a, uh, NYC CNC, they've got videos where they're unveiling all of the different parts that uh, other creators have made for the robot. And I look forward to seeing when they're all put on there. So uh, my, my little contribution to it right here. And if, uh, if Saunders Machine Works needs my help again with another project, I'll be here to help them. All right. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make this little part for Johnny Five. And uh, be sure to check out NYC CNC for the, uh, for the build over there. All right, check you guys later.